Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to create a simple menu system and how to get a selection for the menu system. The second part of the video will be how to process the menu system. It's really not anything tricky. So we have a function that we already wrote called get integer, and that's going to allow us to determine what we really need to get. We have the lowest and the highest in here. So let's go and create a function called display menu. So this particular case, what we want to do is have a menu system that's going to say, press one to do this, press two to do this, press three, and so on. So let's go and create it as a void. Now remember, a void returns uh, nothing. So there you normally use to display items or print something that after being calculated or even calculating display and not return anything. So we're just going to call this simply display menu. Now we do not need any variables, any parameters or anything like that. So we're just going to do simple display menu and we'll start off simple. So let's go display menu. And we'll do this here. And what we might do is uh, enhance this a little, which will go back to the question, what happens if we have three values in there? But let's go and not worry about that right now. Let's go and put in here. We're just doing nothing more than displaying. So we're going to do C out. Press one to do this. And then we'll do a. Now, this is acceptable if you want to. Remember, we talked about it's not a good idea to use the new line character for two reasons. One, it does not flush the buffer, but also remember that it doesn't work on every system. So, you have to bear that in mind. It should work on uh, Macs as well, but you might be using another compiler that doesn't recognize it. So what I'm going to do here is, and I'll just copy the same thing in here. And then we'll go back and change whatever we need to. So what we need to do here is change this to two, three, and four. And this will be to exit. So you would put your individual menu selections in here. Maybe this would be press one to calculate the area of a rectangle, press two to calculate the area of a circle, press three to calculate the volume of a cube or whatever you would put in here as your prompts. And we do not need a return statement in here. So let's go and test this in here. So we could also put in here, please enter your selection, but we're going to use this with the, the, the get integer. So let's just go and test this real quick. So what we just do is display menu. And then we'll run it. And so all it does is display the menu. So that's not really exciting, but it does the purpose of it. So the next thing we want to do here is add, let's put this here. So now let's go and write a function, which we've actually written, but we use the function to get menu selection. So really what we have is one, two, three, and four. So what we're going to do here is, and we'll, uh, we could call it get selection, but we don't really want to change the name because then we have to rechange all that other stuff. So let's create an integer called selection. 
And then what we'll do here is selection equals get integer. So we're going to pass 1 as the lowest, 4 as the highest. And then we'll do our own, um, please enter your selection. And we could put between one and four and all that, but we don't really have to. Um, we could actually add that into the function if we wanted to, but we're not going to right now. So let's go and check this out, and then we're going to um, we'll print out selection. Make sure we get the right selection. So let's click here and run it and see what happens. So remember that I always check the one below the minimum first, one higher than the highest first. Now, we did it before with the salary. We shouldn't have to do it again, but I want to make sure. So let's go zero and invalid number. Let's do five invalid number, and then let's do four, and that works. So now we have it good. So we got the number in here that we wanted. So the next thing we want to do is create a, uh, a, a function that's called process selection. Now notice I'm not adding any other variables other than selection in here. So let's go and do a void because remember this is not going to um, do anything. It's just going to process selection. It's not going to return anything, but we might want to change it later on to see if we want to display something um, that is processed perfectly or whatever it is. For right now, let's just leave it as void. And then we'll call it process selection. And what we need to pass here is the selection. So we need an integer. And let's create the actual selection. Now this is going to be done with a simple case statement, a switch case statement. And always remember that you're going to put in a comment, this function will do and whatever it needs to do. So we can call this selection or whatever you want to call it. Remember that the name here is irrelevant. So let's go and do a switch selection. And let's just print out what they chose. So we're going to do case one, see out process one. And remember, you need a break. Otherwise, it'll do the same thing over and over again. So let's go and copy so I don't have to rewrite everything. So let's go and case two. And we'll do process two. Case three. Process three. And then case four, process, um, let's just say exit. And then I always do this, um, but it's not always necessary, but I do it anyway. And I'll do default. And I'll do C out. Error. 
we should not have gotten here. So we should never get there because, I need to put some end L's. We should never get here, and I'll put a break in here even though we don't need it. We should never have gotten here because our process to selection or the get to selection should make sure we have a valid selection. But by putting it in there, if you make a change and then all of a sudden uh, it goes to default, we know that we need something that has to be fixed. So let's go and run this here. And we'll just do uh, two and then we'll do four. So first thing is we'll do two. It should say, if we did it right, process two. And it says two. So I thought I put process two, but I guess I didn't do it. And it might be because I didn't call the function. So that makes sense. So let's go and do process selection. And we'll pass the selection. Now let's try it again. And we'll do two, process two. So that works. And then we'll do four. So it looks like, uh, it says process exit. So everything looks good at that point in time. So I'm going to put the video on pause to open it up for questions. We are back now and we are going to actually write a menu selection that's going to get the area of a rectangle. So it sounds uh, difficult, but it's really rather easy. So let's go to our process selection and we also have to go to our menu and we're going to do press one to um, get the area of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is keep it simple because I want to use uh, integers. So we'll just make it rather simple. So what we need now is we need a function that's going to calculate the area of a rectangle. So let's go and write that now. It's really uh, not that difficult. So let's do a integer. We're going to return an integer and we'll do calc area rectangle and we really don't need to pass anything here at this point in time uh, except for the length and the width that's it so now this is very important if you do the length and the width you better make sure that you pass it in the length and the width um, in this particular case, it really doesn't matter too much because the length times the width equals the width times the length. That's a property in math. I believe it's called the commutative property where A times B equals B times A. So in this particular case, it's fine. But if you're doing something where you're dividing one by the other, then you're really going to uh, run into a problem. So we want to make sure that we're doing it properly right from the get-go. And we'll create our area of a rectangle. And I spelled that wrong. So let me go back and fix this. And we'll go back up here and fix this. Now, I want to show you something important. Notice that I did not get an error here because it's perfectly legal to declare something after main without a prototype. The problem is you won't be able to access it in here. But now we have a prototype without a matching function definition. So we need to get the spelling there correctly. So. That should take care of this. So now what we want to do is write the area of a rectangle in here. So we need the length and the width. 
So I'm going to do length and the width. So I'm going to show you a way that you could do it. I just don't think it's good programming. So we could do this return length times the width. We could do that. I don't personally feel that makes a lot of sense, except if something is really extremely simple. So let's do this instead. Let's just do integer and we'll call it area. And then we'll do area equals length times the width. And then we'll return area. So a couple things to remember here. Number one is we could have done return area um, or return length times the width. We talked about that. We declared area, but technically we could have done um, this as well. Equals length times the width. Uh, and I don't have a problem if you do the uh, length times the width in this, because when you're using a parameter, it's acceptable to do that. But I prefer that you do not do it because you're going to be prone to making more mistakes. So let's just do it this way for now. So we have integer area, we're declaring one. We're saying what is the area? How do you calculate it? And then we're going to return the area. So this gives you the opportunity to write a, a description. The area is the length times the width or whatever that you want to do. So now let's go and we need to, in this particular case, we have two different things that we need to get. So we can do it one of two different ways. So since we're doing the area of a rectangle, we technically could get it. We can do it two different ways. And I'm going to do it both ways in here. We're going to do, we technically could get the length and the width here because we're doing something specific that needs a length and a width. Or we could do this. So we're going to process area of a rectangle. And then what we'll do here, we need in, in process selection, we need some variables. So we need three integers. We need area of a rectangle. And I'm doing area of a rectangle as opposed to area because we might want to do area of a circle or something else in here. And then we'll do length. And then width. So the reason why this is really a little bit better is because we can, we don't, let's try this one more time. The reason why this is a little bit better is because we can, we have the, the length and the width in here. So we can display the results and say the rectangle, the area of a rectangle of length, this and width, this equals that. Uh, did I spell this wrong? Is that right? I think that's right. So now we have process area rectangle. So what we want to do here is length equals get integer. But we have a problem now because get integer is going to be asking for a minimum and a maximum. So this is where it's so great where you have uh, what's called function overloading. So now we can create a function that does basically the exact same thing in here, but we want to have it where it's just a minimum. So this way we can get a something that only accepts positive numbers and something greater than zero. So we don't want anything that is less than one. We don't want a zero 
length. We don't want a zero width. So we're going to do integer, get integer. And then we're going to do just plain integer and string. So what that'll do is allow us to have a minimum, but not a maximum. We're not going to know what the actual maximum would be. You might want to put a maximum, then you can use that. So that will avoid somebody from doing eight gazillion in here. Don't know how much that is. So let's go and create that in here. So we'll call this minimum. Remember, don't use min. And we'll call this prompt. So it's basically going to be the same thing as the get integer here. And let's go and we have, we'll just copy this here and we will modify what we need to modify. So let's get rid of this. We don't need this. So what we need here now is need number. We don't need the or. So we can just get rid of this. And we do need to change this to minimum. And then we have everything is should be looking good here. So let me close this. Get integer. We have the lowest in here. So we'll put here, so you could actually could put for in here, invalid number um, must be greater than zero. And then we could put minimum in here. So we can go back and enhance that later on. So we have in here, let's go to our switch statement. And we want to do get integer. And we'll put here min as one. And then we'll do what is the length. And of course, I wish I could spell uh, the rectangle. And I'll put a spell check. One of these days will actually help me out. And then we need to do the same thing with the width. All right, so let's see what I'm doing wrong in here. Doesn't like what I'm doing. Um, so I must have some kind of simple thing going get integer. Not sure what I'm doing wrong, but we'll fix it. So let's just do width equals get integer. And we want, okay, so this is the wrong, I might have spelled it wrong. I wonder if I spelled it wrong. So we'll do the same thing. What is the width? So let me go back to my prototype to see if I spelled it wrong because I should not be getting this error. So the easiest way to tell is if I did this. Okay, so it's, I must have spelled it wrong. So let me go up top here and see what I did. Um, get, ah, this is what I did wrong. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's go and fix that down here. And we're looking to the process selection, see if all our little nasty things get away in here. So what is the width? And then we'll just do a simple C out the area of the rectangle. And we could do width length of this and width of that is and x 
So we need to do calculate it. Um, area equals get area or is it calc area? Let's see what it, we called it. Calc area of a rectangle. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to pass the length and the width. And now we'll just do something simple. We'll do, this should be area of rectangle. Eventually I will learn how to spell. And let's go and run this in here. The area of rectangle is area. And that's looking good. So now uh, I get again, area rectangle. Finally, after 27 times. So let's go and run this now and let's see how that works. So we're gonna do get the area of a rectangle. Let's run this one here and let's see what it is. So it says, what is the process area of rectangles? What are we doing? What is the length? So let's do um, 10. And then for the width, let's do 7. So if we did it right, we're going to get 70. And the area is 70, and we had selection number 1. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to delete that here. See how we don't really need this. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to get this where, well, this only does one thing. Well, what happens if we want to keep processing until we get to number four? So let's go and go back and look at this. I'm going to end this video now. Then, and then we're going to go and make a few changes in there to enhance some things and a different way to do the same thing. So let's end it and I'll take some questions.